So these are just a few examples of some of the devices you can pair with a security system. Now this isn't all of them, but this is a good representation of some of the things you can do. The first one is a door window sensor. Now this door window sensor works uh, by detecting when something is opened or closed. And you put okay. these two pieces, one on one side and the other on the other side. So on a door, for example, you'd put this on the door frame mm -hmm. and then this on the actual door. So when the door opens up, this magnet inside here separates from the sensor and that's, that's what, what it triggers. That's what triggers okay. it. It says, cool. hey, I'm open, I'm closed, things like that. So this is actually a really high-powered magnet that then connects to this sensor. Now this could be put on medicine cabinets, you could put it on a gun safe, you could put it on a liquor cabinet, you could put it on the cabinet where you keep, or the closet where you keep like chemicals and things. So it doesn't just have to be on your perimeter doors and windows. No, but cool. I mean, perimeter doors and windows are the most common space for it, but there's certainly a lot of other applications for it. Okay. Basically think of it as this, anything that opens or closes, you can now get a notification of it or have it tied in with your security system. And you could, in some cases, not have it related to your security system. For example, I have one of these on my medicine cabinet because we have daughters who love to get in there and steal cough drops because they think it's candy and steal <laughs> band-aids because they think they're stickers. Uh -huh. So we put one of these on the door and now every time the door opens, we hear medicine cabinet open, medicine cabinet closed. In the middle of the night, we don't want to have the siren going off because we arm our system at night mm -hmm. because we needed to get some medicine for a baby who is sick or something so like that. you can customize it. You can absolutely customize cool. it. The other thing you could do is create custom names. So I don't have to be limited to you know, a certain name for it. I can say medicine cabinet open or you know, Kelsey's medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. or, you know, if you've got different people's cabinets or different yeah. people's windows, Kelsey's bedroom window, Jeremy's bedroom door, things like that. The other thing I do is I put these on the interior doors of my house for certain reasons. Um, in one case, I put it uh, on an interior door so that I could trigger a smart light. Um, we've got a closet downstairs where we keep all of our uh, food and supplies and things like that, kind of our extra stuff. It's like a mm -hmm. utility or, or, or storage room. And the sensor on the door, when the door opens, set, sends a signal that says turn on light. And the light will turn on. So instead of us reaching in the dark for a switch, mm -hmm. the light turns on automatically. And the same rule that we've created says when door closed, turn light off. Now the drawback is if I go in the room and close the door behind me, the light turns off on me, so I have to remember to turn the light uh -huh. on. But it at least automatically turns the light on for me. Um, and most of the time, I'll just leave that door open while I'm in there. And then when I close it again, it turns it off. It so it saves some energy. Yeah, never have to worry about leaving that on. Um, but it's a nice way of, of automating something that normally I was having to grope in the dark to try yeah. and find a light switch for. Cool. Um, another thing we'll do with this is we put them on the interior doors of our children's bedrooms. Uh, just last night, we had a, a child getting out of bed multiple times because they were not <laughs> feeling well. Uh -huh. Well. When the door opens up, I can instantly hear, you know, Lola's bedroom door open. I can go and re respond quickly. Uh, any parent will know and will tell you, you know, if you can quickly get that kid back into bed, everything works out a lot better than if they start roaming the house looking for snacks and waking up and waking up the other kids. So just having that little early warning system, the same as a security device is an early warning system for intruders. That early warning system is for the, the lifestyle things that we have inside our home, managing our children, managing our home. So very useful awesome. sensor. And again, you can put, you know, these all over the house, anything that opens or closes, it's going to help give you some information. Cool. So the second sensor is a motion sensor. Now with a door sensor, you're going to want to make sure from a protection standpoint that you put one on at least the interior, on the exterior door, excuse me. So any door that's being used to access the home, 90% of all break-ins occur because of a, a break-in through the exterior okay. door. Okay. People know that they don't want to get cut up by breaking glass. It's a lot louder to break through glass. So breaking through a doorway, I mean, there's really only this much wood, you know, mm -hmm. stopping the, the deadbolt from breaking through anyway. So whether it's a crowbar or a kick, they can oftentimes get through that door a lot quicker. So okay. mandatory when you're a security company, putting one of these on every exterior door so that if they were to use that way to get inside your home, whether it's the front door, the back door, the side door, whatever, uh, that's protected. Okay. Now you could put these also on the windows. Uh, if you're worried about those, a lot of security companies will say we won't bother putting them on upstairs windows. Um, and while that certainly is true for most people, aren't, most intruders aren't going to go get a ladder and place it up against the right. house. Um, I personally think having a, a sensor on every window is smart because these sensors will do more than just trigger security. You could also save a lot of energy with them too. When they're tied to a smart thermostat, for example, um, if I were to leave the upstairs bedroom door open, or sorry, bedroom window open, um, all night, then the air from outside is coming into the home. And if my air conditioner or my heater is blowing the whole time, they are potentially negating the, its effects. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. By having a rule in my security system that says when, do when window left open or when door left open, 
turn my thermostat off until it's closed again and then resume the schedule. Can save you some energy there. Um, yeah, so there's definitely you know, some benefits to putting those, but there's also, you have to weigh the cost. Is it more expensive to put one of these on every sensor in the upstairs windows when you know you don't need them for security and maybe you don't open them very often? That's only something that the homeowner's gonna be able to make a decision on anyway. So you talk to them and find out what is the best thing for them. Okay. Um, and that will help them understand um, what kind of sensor network they wanna build for their, for their upstairs. Um, but again, my recommendation is put one of these on anything that opens and closes, um, even the upstairs windows. But at a minimum, the uh, entry, sorry, the uh, exterior doors, and then any windows on the downstairs that look like they're potentially a threat. Maybe that's a window that you leave unlocked for one reason or another. Maybe it's a window that's behind a bunch of bushes or a tree that someone could oh, hide yeah. behind there and, and jimmy and get open if they wanted to. So it's definitely um, walking around the house and... Yeah, that's, that, I mean, that's part of it. it. And not everyone has the opportunity to walk around the house. There are some security professionals that are selling over the phone, some security okay. professionals that are selling at a kiosk at a home show or, or at a, a retail location. Just asking the right questions then. Yeah, and some questions you can ask are, you know, what are your habits? Is there a window that you typically, you know, that if okay. you were going to break into your house, let's say you lost your key, if you were going to break into your house, what Which window one? would you choose? You know, that's and good. well, yeah. we'd want to make sure we cover that window too, right? Um, you know, what, what doors do you have? How many doors do you have? Okay, who's coming and going? What's using those doors? How many people do you have coming and going in your home? So asking the right questions is definitely a big part of it. Okay. So these sensors are covering the perimeter of your house and that's when these motion sensors come into play. They cover the interior. If they are somehow able to get past the perimeter of your house, either because they're super sneaky and super good or because you haven't bought a sensor for every possible thing that opens and closes, the interior motion sensors will catch them. Again, if they're placed in the right places. The way this device works is it detects motion by sending out an infrared beam into the air. Uh, you can't see it, but it's typically mounted on the wall, uh, in a corner, somewhere like that, and this beam is sent out in the air, and when the system is armed in away mode, then these turn on, sending that beam out, and if anything breaks that beam, then it automatically sets off the alarm. And it knows that, hey, if this is, br if the, if, the, if I detect motion when my, when I, my system is armed, mm -hmm. I should have first had a countdown because the door sensor opened up. And since right. I didn't, that means there's someone in the house, they got in somehow other than a door, set the alarm off. Okay. okay. Now these motion sensors have a range of about 30, 35 feet, somewhere in that realm. Okay. Um, you know, and again, it depends on... And where would you put these? Well, so I would typically put them in what, what I call a high traffic area. So in the event that uh, someone were to break in, what's that one part of your home, and this is another good question to ask your customer, mm -hmm. what's that one part of your home where uh, if someone were to break in anywhere that they would have to pass through? Hallways are a great place. The main living room area where it's like maybe it's, you know, it's the door, the front door, the kitchen, all of it's uh -huh. kind of converge on that main living room area before going to the bedrooms. Stairs. You know, stairs are good. The, the goal here is that you want to put it in a place where if someone were to get into your house, where would okay. they be detected to stop them from going somewhere you definitely don't want them to be? Right. Which, for example, if you're sleeping at night, you don't want them to be going to the bedrooms. You'd rather have that alarm go off before they can get to the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. You don't want them back there. So definitely. putting it in that hallway, putting it in the, the you know entryway maybe. Um, now the other thing too is because of the, the way these emit their light, um, they're actually shooting that out. You want to point these away from windows. So if you're pointing towards a window, and someone walks outside of the window or trees move or you know extreme temperatures, it could create a false alarm. Okay. So you wanna try and position it, if there were a bunch of windows here, for example, I'd wanna put it above, away from the windows, but still pointing down to where if, I were to, if an intruder were to come through the window, it would catch them as soon as they got inside. Cool. Does that make okay. sense? Yep, definitely. Motion sensors are also good for triggering uh, automation. Um, although they're a little bit different than a door window sensor. A door window sensor instantly sends a signal every time. A motion sensor sends a signal about once every 15 minutes just to save battery life. So if someone walks in front of it, you could say, hey, when you detect motion, turn on the light. But if someone walked in front of it again within 10 minutes from that point, then it wouldn't send a second signal. It would have to wait for another 15 minutes. But you could use it to say, hey, when motion detected, maybe it's downstairs in a basement where you don't go very often, uh -huh. um, things like that. You could use it as doubly a motion sensor for intrusion, but also for triggering some automation or things like that. Cool, okay. So, so a glass break detector can cover um, all of the windows in a particular room, 
but you don't want to oversell it and say that this will cover the whole house. You want to say, hey, you know, if you've got a, one particular room with a lot of windows, and if you're in a situation where you're not able to see their home, maybe you're not at, at the home, you're in one of the sales we talked sales scenarios we talked about before, you could ask questions like, you know, is there a particular room in your home that has a lot of windows? Mm -hmm. You know, t tell me about your living room. Tell me about your dining room area. Are there a lot of windows in there? You know, how would you prefer to protect those? Would you prefer to protect them with a, a sensor on each one or a glass break detector? Okay. Now, the other thing too to think about is with modern windows, chances are, because they're double, sometimes triple pane windows, to break a window is a lot of effort. Okay. So you might want to talk with the customer and, and find out about their actual windows and determine whether one of these or, or this or both is a better scenario. If it's a window that they can easily break, you want to detect the glass, but um, having this on there as well also says, hey, if you detect the breaking glass or if it doesn't detect the breaking glass, either way, when you open the window, you're, it'll, go it'll go off. And you think about the habits of what someone's most likely going to do. They're not, probably not going to break the glass, clear out all the glass, and then climb through. What they'll often do is break the glass enough that they can unclip it and then they open the window, in which case this scenario, this sensor would do it too. Okay. So you really have to talk with the customer and decide what is the best thing for their scenario based on their budget and based on their habits. Okay, cool. So the next sensor is what we call a tilt sensor. A tilt sensor goes on a garage door, an overhead garage door, to detect whether it's opened or closed. And it's got a little um, roller ball inside here that tilts. Uh, in fact, can you hear you that? Know? Oh yeah, you can. Okay. You kind of hear this, the way it rolls. Mm -hmm. When it rolls back and forth, it says, oh, I'm open, I'm closed. And that little metal ball, when it rolls down, it completes a circuit that then sends a signal similar to the way this magnet completes a circuit, okay? This little roller ball completes a circuit that says, oh, I'm closed or I'm open, and then sends that signal that wirelessly to the panel. Okay. Great for garage doors. Um, I think if you think about it, a great question you can ask is, what do you keep inside your garage? How often you know, would you forget to leave that garage door closed? Um, you know, there's been more than once um, that I've come home and found my garage door completely open and realized I left it open the whole time I was okay. gone. Um, so having that protection, if you think about the things you keep in your garage, um, well, tools, your cars. toys, your cars, mm -hmm. I mean, the, we, there's probably as much if not more value inside your garage than the rest of your house combined. Yep. So knowing that that garage is protected is an important part of your security system. So having that connected to the panel and being able to communicate uh, when that, that door has been opened. Now, a lot of criminals will um, break into your house through a garage because they know that the sensors will be on the, on the doors, but the people don't protect the garage. And what they'll do is they'll take a crowbar or a hammer or something like that. They'll smack right on the top of the garage door, okay, right in the middle. And that'll open it? No. no. What it does is allows them to stick a coat hanger inside, and you know that red dangly thing in there? When you pull that, it's a release to manually open the garage door. All they have to do is dent it enough, that. stick that coat hanger in there, pull that thing, and now they can open it up. Well, with one of these in place, as soon as that thing starts to open up, the now, the, now the security system is going off okay. and protecting your garage. So it is a great protection for a garage door. Um, a lot of times also people won't put a sensor on the exterior door from their garage out to the outside of the house. So if someone breaks in there, they won't unload everything through there. What they'll do is they'll break in through the side door or a side window, open then they'll the open the garage door and that way makes it easy to get stuff out. But again, Sticky. that then triggers it immediately. Yeah. So it's a great way of protecting all those valuable assets inside the garage. What do you keep in your garage? Cars, my husband has tools. There's a lot. I mean, bikes, well, my sports dad equipment. Well, boat in the garage. So, so, yeah, there's a lot of value in our expensive. garages. So don't miss that tilt sensor because that is something that's really, really potentially valuable for a customer and protects a lot of their assets. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, from a lifestyle standpoint, there's a lot of convenience that comes there. So I can say, um, for example, what, uh, you know, how often have you forgotten to close the garage door? And they'll say, oh, you know, this many times or, you know, it has happened or things like mm -hmm. that. Getting a text message on your phone that says garage door was left open happens within a minute of you leaving it open without closing it. Cool, so turn right back around. Yep, turn right back around and do it, Definitely. okay? And there's even devices, so there's a difference between um, knowledge, and knowledge and connectivity mm -hmm. and actual control. So this gives you knowledge and connectivity. I now know that my garage door was left open because of a notification on my phone or because my alarm system goes off, but I can't do anything about it. Mm 
That's what I was going to ask. So you can't actually close your garage? No, that's when you'd that. need a remote garage door controller okay. um, that would then pair with the panel or pair with your system that allows that garage door to close. So you could say, oh, I forgot to close my garage door. Instead of turning back around and going home, now you can say, okay, well, let me just do it from my phone right and close my app. garage. Cool. Mm -hmm. Right now. Cool. So it's, again, this, that combination of knowledge and awareness combined with the ability to control something. You okay. know, a door, for example, gives you that knowledge of, hey, I'm, I've been left open. So it's going to automatically turn the thermostat down, okay? Or you could even say, hey, the, because it's done, I now have control over my thermostat and I can manually turn it down if you wanted to do it that way, okay? The other thing that um, is nice about these is uh, if you've got a smart door lock, you wouldn't want to lock your front door if the door is open. So knowing whether the door is open or closed allows you to know, okay, it's safe to go ahead and lock, lock it. it. So again, it's the knowledge combined with the control on your app that allows okay. you to do something remotely. Next are life safety sensors. And there's a whole lot of life safety sensors. And these are, again, just basic security sensors. There's, there's a lot more than that. But these are some of the more common ones. From a life safety standpoint, there's things like smoke detectors. This is a pretty common you know, smoke detector, but the difference is it's connected to the panel, which is connected to the monitoring station. So when this goes off... It would do the same thing. Yeah, it, it sends a signal to the monitoring station, says okay. smoke detector's going off. If they don't get, can't get in touch with you, they can still send the fire department out to you. A smoke detector that comes with your home or that you buy from the local uh, hardware store doesn't have that connectivity, and therefore if it goes off, you're depending on your neighbors to hear the beeping and do something. Chances are most people aren't going to hear it. Even if they are home, they're probably going to think it's a false alarm or things like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you burn the, you know, burn some toast. You know, so it's it's there's some added functionality and benefit to having a connected smoke detector uh, as opposed to a non-connected smoke detector. Now, the, you can also get a carbon monoxide sensor um, that will connect to the panel. Carbon monoxide sensors are mandatory in about 50% of the states. Uh, most people don't know that. Uh, but that you know, if you live in a state where it's mandatory to own a smoke, de a carbon monoxide detector in your in your home, most people don't actually have one. So uh, that's a nice little add-on. You could say, well, in order to be compliant with the law, you need to get one of these. And in the event of something happening, you know, carbon monoxide is pretty scary. I mean, there's a lot of carbon monoxide deaths in the United States every year. Yeah, you don't know. You fall asleep, and and because of the gas, everyone in the home is now passed out. And when that alarm goes off, now they're sending the the authorities out to your home to knock on that door, to get inside, and to help oh. you so that they can air the house out and get you to safety instead of you passing away in the night, which is, is tremendously yeah. scary. Yeah. So these flood sensors are great to be able to put under sinks. You can put them under water heaters, put them back behind the fridge. Uh, anywhere that there might be water leaking, um, you put one of these back there, and the holes there allow you to mount it either to the floor, so I could screw it down to the floor, or I could screw it to the wall whichever way, um, and hold it in place to make sure it's not there. It's also got a nice long cord that you potentially could trim to length if you needed to. Um, but from a, a flood detection standpoint, getting a text message that a flood has occurred or water's you know, had a problem in your yeah. home is a lot better than having to come home to you know, two, three, four, or more inches of water you know, in the house. So There's also a number of other devices that you can connect to the panel um, that provide more lifestyle type things. For example, um, a lamp module. Uh, these are great to be able to uh, plug in anything that plugs in and control it. Uh, so one really great use for this is the home router. Um, when you are watching Netflix and suddenly something's not working, rather than going out and finding the router and pressing the button on the back of it or unplugging it and replugging it, you simply open up your phone and say turn off router and turn it back on. Or you, you can use voice control. We do this at our house. We've got one of those Amazon Echo Dots oh, yeah. and we'll actually say Alexa turn off the router. Alexa, turn on the router. And then we're from our couch, we're still doing all that, not having to get up and do that. These are also great for, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of ladies forget. Say, my hair straightener. Hair straighteners, exactly. <laughs> no. Always forget. How many times have you oh, seriously. come home and it's like, that's been on all day long? Just the energy savings alone are probably pay for this device. But, <laughs> but from a danger standpoint, you could potentially create a fire by having that. Oh. So having something in here, Imagine plugging your hair straightener into this every day and using it, and then you have a rule that says, when my system is armed away, turn, turn off. off this. That's what I mean. Okay? I also love them for Christmas trees. I had our oh, Christmas tree yeah. plugged into this and set it up on a schedule that said, every morning at 6 a.m., turn on the Christmas tree. Every evening at midnight, turn off the Christmas tree. And the Christmas tree was on during the day, and it was off at night. We never had to worry about fires. Automatically turned itself off when we left and turned itself back on when we came home. So during the holiday season, we never worried about unplugging our Christmas tree, but it was always on when we wanted it and always off when we didn't need it. So right. a lot safer. Yeah.
So there's a lot of great applications for this, both from an energy saving standpoint and also a safety standpoint. You can almost consider this a form of a life safety device uh, because it could potentially prevent a fire from occurring, either by something plugged in um, or or uh, or something that you know could cause a fire like a Christmas tree. Yeah. So very cool. useful devices. Um, we also have another version of this that's a dimmer. So if you wanted to be able to for your lamps. Yeah, do lamps. You can do that. Like that Although too. in my experience, people are moving away from floor or table type lamps. It's mostly overhead lighting. But yeah. if you do have them, it's a, it's a nice device to have. Cool. This is an image sensor. Uh, this basically works where the motion sensor has a built-in camera into it. So you can also say, hey, I want to see what's happening there and uh, take a picture um, of, of what you see. Um, this, is, this is a key fob. Key fob is a nice little keychain remote. Um, and while I don't personally recommend these because I don't think pe I think with people's phones they're not going to use them as much, um, they are nice in certain scenarios. Um, for one thing, if you so this has got a, it's disguised to look like a um, a car keychain. Mm -hmm. So you got lock and unlock, but this is actually you press it once to arm the system in stay mode. Press it twice to arm the system in away mode. Press, um, and oh sorry, it's the lock button. Press lock once and then lock twice, or press unlock to disarm the system. Now there's no code required, so it's potentially a security risk. If you leave this out and someone steals it, if you lose it, Keys. someone could disarm your system by pressing that one button. Okay. But the other thing that's nice about this, and this is why I almost recommend it more, is it's a panic button. I can press both lock and unlock together for three seconds, and it will set off the, the oh, siren. Cool. If for a security uh -huh. problem. So if you're coming home, maybe someone creepy is following you or someone's trying to approach you or you know get aggressive with you, things like that, mm -hmm. you could press and hold this and it will automatically set off your siren for you, even if your system's not armed. Uh, it's a nice way That's of having an emergency cool. panic. Yeah. Although most people are going to prefer the Bluetooth disarming with the system, and that's where you pair your phone cool. with the system, and it disarms automatically when you get in range, or using the mobile app. Uh, but there's a lot of other possibilities too. And this is only one small piece of it. There's a lot more devices in there too. The biggest thing is to be asking your customer questions. Asking them, you know, what are your habits? Who's coming and going? How many people are you giving your codes away to? How many people are you giving keys away to? Um, you know, if, if you understand who's coming and going, then you can kind of assess and say, hey, based on your lifestyle, this is what you want. You know, what kind of area are you living in? Are you worried about break-ins or are you more wanting lifestyle type devices? Are you wanting things that are gonna save you energy and protect your home from you know floods and fire and things like that, or are you more worried about security threats? You know, someone breaking into your home. Mm -hmm. So understanding that allows you to tailor the system for them in a way that lets the customer get something exactly what they want. Now they could always expand out to get all of it eventually, but at least from a starting standpoint, they could start with the things that are most important to them based on their budget and their appetite for learning.